This is a very special Weedonopolis interview where we got a chance to talk to Adam Baldwin, who plays executive officer of Michael Slatterly in the new TNT show, The Last Ship, which premieres on June 22nd. Sit back and enjoy the interview. Okay, so um, I've actually seen the pilot for uh, The Last Ship. I got to see it at WonderCon. So is it okay for you to answer questions about the pilot? Sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. So my first question is, what can you tell me about uh, your character, Mike Slatterly? Is that correct? Yes. Mike Slattery is the executive officer, second in command, of the USS Navy guided missile destroyer Nathan James, DDG-151, for those of you keeping score at home. Uh, He... Is he and the captain have a relationship that is uh, a peer? There's a relationship that is a peer relationship, but they are supportive of each other's decisions. The captain ultimately has the final decision in whatever the ship is going to do, but the executive officer is there to help him be sure that he's making the right call. Your characters, were they friends before every, like, would you consider them close friends before this crisis hits? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. They, uh, they were in a, uh, Chandler was getting to, ready to rotate out, uh, to a higher command post, and Slattery was going to take over command of the ship, but obviously, uh, <laughs> events unfold that forestall that, so... You, they, yeah, but they were friends, sure. Well, I noticed in the pilot, like, they didn't really agree on the course of action they should take uh, on several occasions, and there was some tension between the two of them. Uh, do you think it was because uh, Slatterly is ready to take command and thinks that, and is kind of bucking against that? No, no. It's because he's making sure Slat, uh, Chandler is making the right decision. And when you have uh, Captain and executive officer, they are, it's, it's perfectly appropriate to challenge the captain's decision-making process up to a point to make, to make sure that he's certain he's making the right call, and as long as it's not done in an insubordinate fashion, then it's perfectly appropriate. I noticed that uh, you've played a lot of military characters in your career. How is this character different? What sets him apart? Well, first of all, he's a higher rank, uh, being, a, being a commander himself. He's uh, the Navy. Uh, we're on a, sh- we're on a, a Navy ship. Um, he is... Oh, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of which one you're comparing him to. <laughs> well, not any one... Sp- Specifically, I just uh, have noticed, okay, uh, on Chuck, you played a military kind of officer who worked for the CIA. On um, In a lot of movies, you've played Marines and different kind of combat officers and things like that. And I was just wondering what, ab- and, and I mean, of course, Jane is a completely different kind of character, but still military-based, mercenary-based. So I was just wondering what personality quirks or things about him and basically in your head when you're playing him how how are you distinguishing him as different what is it about him that's different than any of the other characters i guess he has a crew of hundreds of men and women that he has to keep disciplined and safe and he has to make sure that they trust him he has a family that's out in the wilderness or out in the world at large, fighting off a deadly virus. He has a, uh, a first-in-command that he absolutely respects and and uh, yet needs to help shepherd into the right decision-making process. Uh, the chain of command there is, is clear. He's got a Navy guided missile destroyer at his fingertips. <laughs> an Arleigh Burke class Navy guided missile destroyer, which is quite something. If you've never been aboard one, I highly recommend it. I'm glad they're on our side. 
there looks like there's a lot of action happening in the pilot. As the series goes forward, is your character going to be able to participate in a lot of that action sequences? Basically, action fighting sequences. Well, let's hope so. I, that's what people like to see Adam Baldwin do is kick ass, right? Exactly. So, all right. So, I, would, I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised if I get to go and shoot some things. <laughs> Um, is this a limited series or is there a possibility of a second season? I just noticed there was only a nine episode order or whatever. So, as far as I know, at this point, the uh, there is an opening for more. Okay, so if we do get a second series season, do you have an idea of where you'd like your character to go? I do, but I haven't read I haven't read it yet, so I, I couldn't I couldn't speculate on it at this time. But I'm sure it will have something to do with further trying to secure the uh, our families and uh, where our crew is to is to be led. Where do you shoot this? It looks really pretty, and it looks like really amazing scenery. Where are you guys shooting? Uh, mostly San Diego. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like that. Well, well, how did you get the, the places that's supposed to be Antarctica or whatever? Where'd you guys shoot that? Up in, uh, up in Canada and Alaska. Uh, that looked really amazing. That, that looked gorgeous. But, um, I guess, yeah. um, my, my next question is, uh, the, the cast, uh, on this show is very diverse and very interesting. Um, what's the camaraderie like on the set? The camaraderie on this show is as strong as any show I've ever been on, and a lot of the credit goes to Eric Dane as our uh, captain, and the leadership that we had from Jack Bender, who was our on-site producer and director, to Tony Mark, who was our unit production manager, all the way up to Michael Bay and his his lieutenants and generals that came and uh, made sure that we were all happy and working hard, and uh, so it, it's it's a very professional and uh, organized, organized chaos, uh, organized group on this ship, which it has to be, because you're portraying the military in uh, an accurate light, and we had technical advisors detached from the Navy to oversee our day-to-day production, so anytime there was a question, Navy centric, we would be able to turn to that advisor and say, are we doing this right? And they would say, yes, no, tweak it this way, uh, tweak it that way. And uh, so we felt we felt honored and privileged to have them welcome us into the fold, as it were. Well, that, that leads me to the next question. With the technical advisors, how much research, or before you got to the first day of shooting, how much research did you do in preparing for this this role, learning about the ship and things like that? We were given some research materials in the early going, uh, one of them being Command at Sea, which was our, our basic text. 